Hi everyone, uh, sorry about the couple of weeks break. Uh, it wasn't anything to do with any problems or any major issues or anything. Basically, I just couldn't get any content out to you. Where I've, uh, I've been working, obviously, but where I've been working, there was just no way I could film. Problems with music, radios and that in the background. Also, people, uh, other tradesmen not wanting to be filmed. Customers, tenants, general clients and stuff like that. So, um, although I had a lot to, to film, I just couldn't. So uh, I've managed to pick up a bit. Uh, in, I have some. Uh, e I've got a sack load of EICRs to do. To be honest, I have a shit ton of EICRs to do. Many in empty properties, many in in, in occupied properties. But uh, we'll get. I'll get through them. Uh, I also have. We have the second fix and final completion of the Ashley Lane uh, rewire to do. Uh, they're going to go ahead with the kitchen now. There, so there's that to carry on with and whatever. Um, and there's lots of diff different kind of jobs coming up actually, um, which I believe I'll be able to chop and get in there and stuff. And if I believe it's good enough to get up there on YouTube, I'll record it and we'll put it up and, uh, you know, obviously uh, try and uh, make it a bit entertaining uh, and maybe even watchable in a, I don't know, kind of educational way. Anyway, guys, here's this week's video. Let's save on page three. Okay guys, uh, welcome back. Uh, just halfway through another EICR um, on a ring circuit, ring main circuit. Anyway, tenants just left and I'm going to, uh, we're doing a um, R1, R2 test. Now I've got the results for the um, resistance results in the cable for the R1, R2. Sorry, for the R1 and the R2. Little R1, little R2. Calculate those together. I'm just coming up to 0 0.34. Um, and we have figure of eight cross connected them at the board, and you can't probably see there. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and go and test the sockets and see what results we get. So, with the little R1 and little R2 cross connected at the board, there we'll just go ahead and test this socket, which I don't think is actually serving anything, it's just sat here on its own, nothing plugged into it. Getting 0 0.32, if there's any resistance in the old uh, the rocker switch there, and uh, obviously. Check its next door neighbour as well. Nothing coming back. 0 0.32 there. A bit of a bouncy rock of that, but it's checking out okay. Oh look, it's battery time. So on this uh, back wall in the kitchen here, you can see there's uh, quite a few appliances going on here. We've got a microwave, uh, some kind of a blending thing going there, a kettle and a toaster. So yeah, four plugs and it looks like the constantly in and out of this socket so i'll go ahead and check this socket see what the readings are i'll just put the camera there so you can see 0 0.32 again put it into the right hand side one turn the switch on get 0 0.33 flick the rocker a bit and then we'll just leave that at 0 0.33 now what you'll get with these older type terraces and certainly the kind of the the rewiring and the circuits the, the way the circuits were laid out when the installation was installed probably way back in the 80s um you often find things like so the up in this particular house like the upstairs sockets are on with the kitchen sockets so there's, there's two ring circuits in this on the, on the installation one is serving downstairs sockets and one is serving upstairs and kitchen sockets. So it's not quite, we don't, we break it up a lot now. We, obviously we, we put the kitchen on its own and stuff like that. Uh, but I mean, I'm just carrying on from the kitchen coming upstairs now. You can see the results on this socket. I'm just, what, this is what I wanted to highlight and show you. So basically, if we go onto the right hand side here, I've got to rock that a little bit. I always give them a couple of things, a couple of little switches on the rockers there. We're getting, um, you can see that, 0 0.36. And then if we go into the left hand side, getting 0 0.40. So for me, that's something, I'll pull that front off and have a look and see if we can get some um, tighter connections and stuff. Or there might be a bit of loose terminals or whatever going on behind there. I won't know until we take it off and have a look and um, hopefully try and get that R1, R2 reading down. Well, there's the trusty screwdriver that's it's done its job well. Let's have a look behind here. So we've got, okay, so the back box is 
has been earthed, connected to earth. Cables are a little bit short, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and tighten these up just to see if there's any uh, any loose terminals. Okay, now well, we're getting 0 0.38 and 40 and stuff before. Let's see what this. Oh, we've come down. So it has come down to similar to the rest of the sockets. Let's try the other side. 0.33. So I did get a few turns on it. And obviously, uh, yeah, all's looking well now. Now we're just doing the R1, R2 on the upstairs lights now. Um, and we pulled the light pin down. This is this is your standard basic kind of installation, basically. Two double sockets in every bedroom and one light fit in every bedroom. Nothing fancy, no frills, basic as it is. Uh, there's a separate boiler feed and a separate 6mm cooker feed. Uh, so nothing too spectacular, very run-of-the-mill. The... -mill. the most modern thing on here is the consumer unit, which is a, a, a dual RCD consumer unit, which is uh, something they started throwing in after the uh, after the 17th edition, which was 2008, I think it was. Yeah. So you can see here, I've got my probes connected, and I'm getting 0 0.79 on the uh, R1 and R2 for the upstairs lights. So we're just getting the R1 and R2 on the downstairs lights which you can see is 0 point, well, 1.07 there and it's just uh, something I wanted to just show you guys while I was here in the kitchen now what we do find sometimes in these properties is these kind of um, retrofitted afterthought extractor fans where it's been kind of you can see that they've just kind of put some a feed into the light put some drunken along the ceiling brought it to an isolator and then, uh, yeah, put a bit of three corner earth to it. Now, in my opinion, that's the C2, C1. We have got exposed live parts there. And the fan as well isn't even working. So that does need dealing with today. But I'll uh, I'll disconnect it at the isolator. And um, we'll, uh, we'll no doubt get permission to throw a new extractor fan in there. I'm not too sure about renewing all this stuff. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's the kind of retrofit things that happen in these properties, especially when, you know, there's a lot of problems with ventilation and damp and mould these days. People just go around throwing these in. Right, all the tests, all the dead tests uh, tested out, checked out, okay, everything's fine. No broken rings or anything like that. I've removed the uh, the giggly sprocket. I'm going to go ahead now and do some get some ZF readings from... Um, various circuits so it's uh, yeah still plug top i'm not going to remove the oven because it's all built in and stuff so i'm just going to test at the isolator itself i guess we should turn the power on then okay so we're at the cooker isolator now and it's just basically plug the plug top in. We're on the loop scale as you can see probably there. Uh, put ATT on because it's got an RCD on it and we don't want it to trip. And um, obviously turn the turn the outlet on, that gives you your, your two dots there. And we'll just give it a test. Remember it gives it, a, it takes quite a little, well probably eight to ten seconds when you have the ATT on before you get a reading. And there we go, 0 0.42. So that's the that's the ZS of the cooker circuit. It's not the end of the cooker circuit because there's an oven down here, and I'm not I'm not going to start stripping bits and pieces and appliances and white goods and all that kind of stuff. It's gone down as a limitation, and um, and yeah, that's the reading. Right, guys. So you see the socket. This is the socket that we had all those appliances on in the kitchen. So we had the microwave, the tote to the kettle, and that kind of juicer blender thing, whatever. Uh, I've just balanced the tester on there, and we're just going to do an RCD test. Fire it up. Um, yep. Automatic, thirty milliamp, and we'll go press that, and I'll go and run to the uh, consumer unit the other side of the house. I'll come back and check the readings, see how it did, did it pass, yep, saying okay, 
for the first time. Times one times is thirty milliseconds, thirty six milliseconds, and five times twenty milliseconds are the two of the highest readings there. Uh, well, we'll just take one of them down, uh, and obviously it didn't drip at all in half times. I'm just flicking up the RCD now. There is obviously, like I said, the dual RCD. We did that one, and I'm just doing this one now, which is on the downstairs socket. So, just giving you a kind of consumer unit eye view of what goes on when the the MFT is connected up and is in auto mode. That's pretty much it. It just flicks over four times, and then we'll go back to the MFT and see the readings. Quick glance down today, you'll see that I have no PPE on whatsoever, no steel toe cap, not needed when I'm in a it's a normal tenant's house. The only thing that's going to fall on me is the cup of tea that I might be having. So you can see the RCD results there. We've got uh, 33 milliseconds at one times and 9 milliseconds five times. That's the two highest readings there. And obviously it didn't trip again at half times. That's all the testing done and dealt with now. Everything checked out fine. The only thing that uh, the only real major thing was the extractor fan, which we're going to go ahead and change. Um, yeah, you might notice a change of clothes slightly. I spilled coffee all over my um, my fleece. Um, I saw I just threw this on because it's what I had in the van. Now, um, I, I have a question for you guys. Just what would you code this? It's I've uh, just uh, seen it on my observations. You know, when you're doing a bit of a visual, I've seen it. I'm just wondering what you would code it, if at all. Would you even code it? It's obviously just a socket screw there. It's now it's not to, to me. That's not a C1. It's not even a C2. It's just a, a kind of Phillips head screw into the back of a socket. It's holding it on. It's strong enough. It's tight enough. It's not going anywhere. Now, obviously, it might interfere with the plug there, do something, but it's uh, solid enough, and we all know why that happens. The back box, you know. <laughs> the, the little lug behind the back, back box oh, gets wider and wider and wider, and then someone just ends up putting a wood screw in there, so... Uh... Yeah, one of the two, one of uh, about three or four different things that I've found on this EICR that I'm going to be writing down, uh, as well as the little repairs we'll do, and uh, that's that's pretty much it. Just found this phone charger on the floor, and uh, yeah, you can see how how the screw might interfere with things. Now there is one thing that I did notice on the couple of extension leads, this being the big one, then I have one upstairs which I've already dealt with. So basically these first three are okay, but this top one, if you can if you just put the torch on it, you can see that the earth pin has snapped in its plastic. It's actually, uh, you know, it's better than being metal, but it's still a bad thing because what it's doing is it's, these have a, like a kind of safety device on it so that you need to put the earth pin in the top for these bottom two to open, which allows the connection to live and neutral. Uh, and then this one, as you can see, because it's been wedged open, you have a live connection, two live connections down there. So anyone can come along and just ram something in there and, uh, you know, potentially get shocked or worse. Um, it's the tenant's extension lead. It is in use, so I will be making them aware of it. Uh, but uh, before that, I'm going to try and at least pull that pin out. All right, so there is actually quite a lot of literature out there to help you with coding and such. Uh, this year, this book came out, and well, this 2019 version, which is the um, NAPIT CICR Code Breakers book. Wonderful, great book, excellent, great, for, just absolutely full, ram-packed, full of knowledge, uh, full of information, full of just kind of helpful hints, tips, guidance. Uh, I'm sure you've heard everyone else bang on about it, and it really is a good a good kind of thing to have on in the in the van uh, on site and it's uh, yeah it's just, it's just i couldn't recommend it enough especially if you're going to be in, getting involved in testing the icrs and that kind of thing there is a um, an earlier version of this which i still have somewhere uh, it might be in the back of the van actually now this and it's like it's like a quarter of the size of this one still a great help but uh, this one's just got even more stuff in so uh, yeah like i said there's a lot of literature out there for to help you code uh, help you just kind of find ways around things how you would uh, come across the situation you might find yourself uh, uh, in a strictly unique uh, situation regarding a fault or a problem or an issue that you've come across while testing and you'll find that you'll be flicking through this book 
uh, or maybe uh, there's, there's other literature out there as well, other books and pieces and best practice and stuff like that. And uh, it might you'll find that it might not be that unique to you, and that there is a, a kind of uh, a way of looking at it that can kind of pop that code right out of your head, and you'll go, oh, yeah, it's quite obvious it's this or it's that and stuff. Now, obviously, it goes without saying that a C1 is one of the most obvious things to kind of deal with and, and do and stuff like that. And certainly back on the job there, um, borderline C1, C2 is, C, is live parts out of reach, but you know, someone just reaches up there, gets a shock. It's, it's, it's bad. So that's, we, we went ahead and changed that. Well, I went ahead and changed that fan. Um, but yeah, I mean, in, in the book here, we've got, uh, equipment inappropriately installed, but unlikely to lead to potential danger throughout its normal operation due to poor workmanship and substandard installation process uh, practices. Now that's uh, BS 7671 uh, 134.1.1, or 134.1.1, um, and they're giving it a C3, and I'm talking about that screw in the socket. In equ equipment in inappropriately installed, but unlikely to lead to potential danger throughout its normal operation. And this is coming up on the uh, description of observation condition of accessories including socket outlets switches and joint boxes etc so the screw yeah was it going to interfere with any equipment well it's certainly if you plug, plug a plug into it you know a three pin plug into it it will slightly interfere um it wasn't too proud but it certainly wasn't as sunk in as a normal socket screw as it was i went ahead and changed it anyway and I found that a normal socket screw actually just fit straight into it. So I don't even know what they were playing at, why, why it's even in there. So it's back to normal now. But I just thought I'd run through this book and find some stuff for you just to kind of bring you up to date and let you know what I'm, uh, where I'm going to find stuff um, or where to find stuff. Um, but yeah, I'll pick it up, guys. About 20 quid. It's an excellent price for um, it's even cheaper if you're a member of NAPIT. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's an excellent price, excellent, great book. Go and pick one up. And it's uh, just ton, tons of other information. I'll give you a quick flick through. There's other bits and pieces in there as well. Safe isolation processes. Um, yeah, just free, free helps you work out when next next to uh, have the place inspected. I mean, I could, we, we, could, we could do an entire video on just this, but... All right, guys, thanks a lot for watching. Sorry about the ramble at the end there. Please go and subscribe and like. Leave me a comment as well. Thank you, guys. Bye now.